Getting a job in data in 2015, you just had to know a little bit of Excel, have some interest in numbers, and basically just be a living, breathing human being. Getting a data job in 2026, you have to master advanced SQL while juggling three different programming languages, optimize entire data warehouses in your sleep, and recite cloud platform best practices like poetry. Why me? <laughs> Look, I know that might sound a little dramatic, but it's actually kind of true. I've been in data analytics for years in the tech industry and I've worked for different companies all making over six figures. And trust me, I can tell the 2026 data analytics job market is way different from when I started. Getting a job as a data analyst isn't necessarily easy, but the good news is that it's actually quite simple. You only need to do three things to get a job as a data analyst and you wanna stay to the end because most people don't do the third thing and that's what really sets you apart. The first thing is skills. You have to have all the right skills to become a data analyst. A lot of people just learn a little bit of data visualization. They use a drag and drop dashboard tool and they say, boom, hire me at six figures. But that doesn't work because the dashboard data analyst is dead. Companies want more. They want data analysts with technical skills, not just drag and drop skills. So yes, you do still need to learn a BI tool or a business intelligence tool like Tableau or Power BI or Looker or whatever tool you wanna learn. But the most important thing you need to learn is SQL. And not just beginner SQL, you need to know intermediate SQL as well. You need to know skills like group by, aggregate functions, having, where, data cleaning, date manipulation, string manipulation, arithmetic operators, creating different calculations, and then of course, lots of joins. And then on the intermediate level, you need to know subqueries, CTEs, window functions, set operations, and a basic understanding of data modeling as well. SQL is the skill that's going to give you the biggest ROI for your learning because a lot of people don't know SQL super well, and that's what's going to help you really stand out on the job market. Because let's face it, anyone can learn how to do a drag and drop dashboard, but employers don't want to train someone from ground zero in SQL. So if you come in already knowing a lot of SQL, you're definitely going to impress. But if you want to get started today with the very basics of SQL for free, grab my intro to SQL course below. And then I have beginner and intermediate as well if you're ready to level up even further. A lot of people ask what SQL platform should I use? What dialect or flavor of SQL should I use? And the truth is it does not matter. All of the different SQL platforms and dialects are about 95% the same. Some of them have their own custom functions, but as long as you know that basic 95% that works in any of them, you're good to go. Once you learn the basics of SQL in any of the dialects, it's so easy to move between them that you don't need to stress about learning all the different dialects. Just choose one, stick with it, and be flexible if you move to other platforms that use other dialects. And it's kind of the same advice when learning a business intelligence tool as well. You don't want to learn all the different platforms. You don't want to go learn Tableau, Power BI, Looker, and all of them on a shallow level. You want to choose one and learn it deeply because once you learn one on a deep level, you can easily transfer those skills to all of the other tools. And you can say that kind of stuff in interviews too. SQL and a BI tool are by far the most important skills, but you also need to know a little bit of just basic Excel skills. And don't worry, you can just Google those on the job. That's what we all do. So yes, make sure you know some basic Excel like pivot tables, VLOOKUPs, aggregate functions, but don't go crazy taking millions of courses and spending tons and tons of time in Excel because I promise you they're never going to ask you about Excel in interviews. And you can just Google it and ChatGPT it on the job. SQL though is going to show up in all of your interviews. On top of that, you need to know some basic statistics. Nothing super crazy, but you need to understand descriptive statistics like max, min, median, mean, mode, standard deviation. You need to understand how to identify outliers in a data set and what to do with those and how to handle them. And you need to understand the overall distribution of your data. Once you get more into advanced data analytics, then you have to worry about A-B testing and hypothesis testing and probability and more advanced things like that. But if you're a beginner, don't worry about that stuff yet. And then of course, it's also really good to learn about data storytelling and communicating data and basically just talking to non-technical stakeholders. And it's 2026 now, so we also have to learn how to use AI to support our data analytics work. So tools like ChatGPT and Claude Code, those are great to help us code faster, to analyze data faster, and to just overall work more efficiently and deliver quicker and more accurate results. Before we go any further, if you're completely new and feeling super overwhelmed after after hearing all of these skills, grab my free three-step data analytics roadmap below. It breaks down everything you need to do to land that first data analytics job, and it's gonna help you jumpstart that career. Seriously, just grab it. You've already said tomorrow and next Monday enough. Just do it! 
After you learn all the skills, the second thing you need to do is build a portfolio. You're gonna take all of those skills you just learned, build some projects, and build a beautiful portfolio that shows that you have all the right skills to be a data analyst. And hiring managers love to see that, especially if you don't have any real world data analytics experience, the projects and portfolio are gonna serve as your experience. And they're gonna give you something to talk about in interviews as well. Building projects is also a great way to see what you know and what you need to work on more, and it's gonna help you increase your confidence as a data analyst because really struggling and working through things and finally getting to that end result is a huge part of being a data analyst. You have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. I already have a video on how to choose the right projects for your portfolio, but you also need to make sure that you choose projects in your target industry because the Titanic data set, the Iris data set, hiring managers have already seen tons of those. So you're not impressing anybody. They're just boring and they're not realistic. So you wanna choose data sets that are in line with your target industry. If you wanna go work in finance, find a mortgage data set or a loan approval data set. If you wanna work in healthcare, find something about vaccine effectiveness or insurance. If you wanna work in tech, find something related to a technical product or some sort of launch. Because if you show companies that you're already doing that type of work in your own personal projects, it's easier to connect the dots between you applying for the job and you getting hired. When you showcase your project in a portfolio, there's a few different things you want to show. You want to start out with an executive summary. Then you want to highlight the business problem. This is super important because you want to show that you're actually solving a realistic real world business problem. Then you want to show the methodology you use. So how did you get from point A to point B? The skills you used. what are the actual tools and technical skills you used? And then you have to summarize all the results and business recommendations from your project and communicate next steps and any limitations if your project has any. This shows the beginning to end thinking of the project and it's also a great way for you to show your communication skills. And again, many years ago, you didn't even need a portfolio to be a data analyst because companies were pretty much hiring anybody who wanted to be a data analyst. And then even just a few years ago, having just a few simple drag and drop dashboards and basic projects, those were enough to get you a job as a data analyst. But now it's a little more competitive and you have to work a little bit smarter to stand out from the rest of the crowd. But I promise it's the job market, it's not you. But this approach of building projects in your target industry and showcasing them in a portfolio is guaranteed to get you a job sooner than all the people who don't do this. The third thing you need to do to be a data analyst is kind of my secret sauce. And it's something that you don't wanna to wait to start at the very end. You need to do it while you're also doing step one and step two. And that is networking. Dun, dun, dun. I know. Networking is such a scary word. You're probably imagining a bunch of people in like an awkward conference center. Everybody's like nervous and sweaty and holding like warm glasses of cheap wine. And yeah, sometimes that is how networking is, especially in academia. But real world networking, modern networking is way different. And it's so important because your network is your net worth. It's not what you know, it's who you know. I know all the cliches, I rolled my eyes at both of those, but they're honestly so true. Nowadays, the best place to network is LinkedIn and there is no better time to get started on LinkedIn than now because it is popping off and growing so much this year. Everybody is on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the best way to connect with other business professionals in a similar stage as you, but it's also a great way to reach out to recruiters and hiring managers. But before you do that, you need to audit your entire profile and clean it up because that is gonna be someone's first impression of you. If your profile sucks and you don't have a profile picture and it looks like you just threw it together, that's not gonna be a good first impression with a recruiter or hiring manager. Because guess what? Recruiters and hiring managers are creepy and nosy. They're probably gonna look you up if they're thinking about interviewing you. Yeah. Plus you want your profile to look good because if your ex looks you up, you wanna at least look good and successful. <laughs> Joking. Or am I? Once your profile is cleaned up, you're ready to start networking on LinkedIn. So you need to get to 500 connections ASAP. Connect with people in your target industry, other data analysts, people who might be hiring or recruiting for data analytics roles. So like technical recruiters, data analytics managers, things like that. And then start connecting with people and engaging in comments. And then once the time is right, slide into their DMs and make your move. You wanna build a little bit of a relationship first before you just ask people for a coffee chat and they'll be more likely to accept if they already recognize you and are already connected with you. Be super brief and respectful of their time and ask for just 15 minutes to learn more about their role. And a lot of times they might even refer you for a job within their company. That is a great way to build your overall network, but you can also use LinkedIn to land more interviews after you apply for a job. After you apply for a job, go reach out to the hiring manager and the recruiter and other people at the company and try to get human contact. This is the exact message that I've sent in my past few job searches and it works wonders. It's kind of like saying, hey, I applied for this role. I'm very serious. Here's my pitch on why I'm qualified please interview me. 
but in a professional way. Because sometimes just getting noticed, getting a referral, or just getting seen and noticed is enough to get your application shortlisted. And of course, you wanna take your networking beyond LinkedIn, go to local events and conferences because the in-person connections matter the most. But I also know they're kind of the hardest to get, especially if you don't live in a tech hub. And you should be networking throughout your entire career, but those are my top tips if you're getting started today. And you really should start today because the longer you put off networking, the harder it gets. Look, becoming a data analyst in 2026 requires a lot more strategic work than it did in 2015, but it's totally still worth it. With a remote data analyst job, you can work from literally anywhere, your kitchen table, your bed, or even a cruise ship like I just did recently. The pay is great too, with most analysts making over 85,000 a year and senior data analysts making 120,000 and up. And not only that, your work actually matters. You're helping businesses make better decisions that actually impact real people. And you know what? If there's one thing you absolutely need to learn to become a data analyst, it's SQL and you need to learn it fast. So watch my video about how to learn SQL fast. I'll link it above. I break down exactly how to go from zero to job ready in the shortest amount of time possible. And don't forget to grab my three-step data analytics roadmap in the description below. It's free. Sending lots of big data energy your way. Bye.